yes. you know, yes. after conference and then also today and thinking about the letters and how it all goes together with that in the 1301. Yeah. Um, slowly it does. You know, you'll get it by the time, you know, we're done. And then you'll be like, okay, now I'm ready to start over. But thank you, no. <laughs> so, that's what I always do. I'm like, okay, like this unknown that I'm taking us into after essay one. By the time we finish the semester, I'll be like, okay, now I know how to teach it all. Um, if we, we could start over, I'd be really good at it. But we'll all be like, no, we're done. We're done. Okay, yeah, good. Next time, okay, <laughs> do those next ones. So, um, questions about just kind of the, in general, the English stuff? So it helped to look at the conferences that way. Yeah, I, I'm like, it dawned on me, and I'm like, I should have showed everybody this before we went away. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I just thought I had to that one week that I mm -hmm. saw. Then I went and looked yeah. really carefully and saw that I didn't mm -hmm. And so much, I am serious, so much of like just life in general is just really, it is slowing down and reading. And um, it, I mean, just slow down, read it, read it carefully. We get so used to, we want to read fast. We're just looking for, oh, except this, that, the other, right? Have you ever clicked on some button and then you realize the minute you click on it that that was the wrong button? Yeah. And if you would have slowed down like two seconds and read just like that two seconds longer, you would have, would have had to wait till that loaded and then go back and then, or sometimes start the whole thing over right so yeah i mean that's that's what life experience and research shows is if we actually slow down we get things done faster because when we try to speed through everything we make mistakes and so i have to tell myself that all the time i'm like kelly slow down slow down and you will be more efficient so. I was just going back and reading like mm -hmm. two or three times a whole day mm -hmm. to make sure nothing's changed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so you know that's 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 part of it too. So so anyway, so we're we're bringing this essay together and it's little bit by bit the pre writings, easy stuff, right? But do you kind of have ideas for your essay overall? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we'll talk about next time. How do you take those pre-writings, that list and that story and that reflection of what it means, and what are your choices about how you put it together and that kind of thing? Yeah. What's a pre -writing? That's the, the, the assignments we did here. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones where, like, the first one was to write a list, right, where oh. you were supposed to write the list. The second one's where you tell the story. The second one's where you, you know... Do that. So oh, make sure if you haven't gotten those turned in, make sure they're turned in. Okay. So not your notes about them. The actual list. The list. Yeah. So you basically make a list of them. Well, list? you watch the video and I explained it how to do it. Oh, see. And then you need to do it and you turn it in because you turned in your notes about it. Yeah. Yeah. Go back in and turn in the list. Okay. okay. And I know you did it on that day, so I won't count it late. You know. I clearly did it. So, I mean, this is part of it, right? Figuring out, oh, yeah. I, I mean, how many of the rest of you all turned in the wrong thing, right? Like a whole bunch, right? It's just That's what happens. That's why I do the format conferences so we can figure out, you know, how to turn things in, where to turn them in, how to read the schedule, all that kind of stuff. So now I can give you even more grief about read the schedule. Right? What it says, you do. Okay, so if it's do, read, watch, you do that. If it's do, do, do. This one's like, this one's twice. <laughs> I don't know why that's twice. So just in case. It's do, really, really. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, Will, so make sure you do the reading for next time. You have your pre-writings, you know, done. And that way we can talk about putting the essay together, some ideas. What you're bringing in here is a rough draft. It's not expected to be pretty or perfect or anything like that, okay? It's just like, look, here's what I got so far. I mean, really, that's you're walking in and saying, here's what I got so far. The other people in your group should be saying, here's what I got so far, and you share, and you give reading writings for readers, right? Got to have somebody read it, and then they can help notice those things where we might have written the instead of they, or they're like, hey, well, you told this, but... 
I don't know that because a lot of times when we tell stories, we forget details because they're already in our mind. And it's like, oh, that's right. You don't know that. And that makes it confusing without telling that. And that's why we really want readers for, for you know, those important things. So. All right. So there is 1301. Let's move over here and get to um, the rest of this stuff. Oh, the nice thing also to know about this is you can go. So what I showed you in the earlier class of finding teachers, like if you're thinking, wow, do I want to take Mr. Coulihan's history class? Well, I can go and download one of his, this is his instructor policies from this semester. I would like to open it. Thank you. And I can see, you know, you can read and see what his, um, you know, policies are, his course requirements, what things you're going to be using. Um, oh, look, you're going to be doing once a week. Students will answer a reflection question, turn it into Blackboard, um, doing logs, reading logs, um, quizzes, those kinds of things. So you can see wow, okay, if I took this guy's class, this is what I would be doing. So it's really nice when it comes time to, um, you know, uh, um, apply for classes. <laughs> when it comes time to um, register for classes and you're thinking about, okay, whose class do I want to take? You can go get a look and see what, you know, their stuff looks like. Then you go, and it also gives you their office. Go by and talk to them too, because there's a difference between, sometimes you may look at it and say, my gosh, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, we do a lot of work. But is it work with someone you get along with who you think, wow, you know, this person, I can talk to them, I can come ask them questions, you know, they're they're that way. Because you can go by and just say, hey, I was just thinking about taking your class in the, you know, spring. Can you just kind of tell me a little bit about kind of what you, what's your approach to teaching or whatever? I just wanted to get to know you, see if I want to take your class. And usually they'll, they'll laugh and they'll be like, okay, cool. All right. They might be really busy and say, I'm really busy. Can you come back later? Okay. okay. And they might blow you off, in which case you'd be like, there's my answer, right? I mean, I don't know. I hope my colleagues wouldn't do that. But, you know, I know those things happen. So. All right, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I am. I'm so happy to be back because this represents a break for me. I mean, I love conferencing, but it is busy and chaotic and crazy. So, so yeah, so I get a break, and then in a week and a half, we'll be back in conference. So, Okay, so that means it is the 18th, right? Here, here we go. So you have a draft of your summary response. Yeah. Yeah? For defining goals, you have your worksheet oh, yeah. done. Yeah, exactly. Summary response for defining goals. Yeah. Draft. Exactly. Right? And we've already, the nice thing is, is you've already got a, a you know, a, a start on doing workshops because we've already done that some with the last one, right? Whenever, last time before we went to conference, we got together and you got to share your ideas with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So what I need you to do is get together, and then I'll go get the workshop sheet so we can workshop. What? Can you bring some candy? I might. I might. Thank you. I could do that. How oh, nice of you. Between you and Louise, man, my student this evening, he goes, well, I'll, I'll be like, let me go get something out of the officer. It's a three-hour class. I'm like, let's take a break. And he'll be like, we break it. <laughs> so you know at some point um it is oh i do have keys cool i was about to say i don't know i can't even get back in my office but i brought my keys so so figure out how you're going to group with get out your drafts what's the first thing we do whenever we're doing this besides say hey hi how are you you know look at each other right read out loud Okay, read what you have out loud, your draft, what you've got so far, read it out loud. Does everybody take a turn? Because as you're reading, you'll notice something you get to fix, and then, woo, your grade's already better, right? Okay, so find somebody to play the game with. I will be right back. You are, um, you know, maybe going to quiz each other, stuff like that, right? So in your history class, you could do that, right? You could say, look, if you're interested in doing a study group, 
you know, rep just reply. And then y'all can, so now I've put it out there, but y'all can reply. If you're interested, go into this message, go to your messages and say, yeah, I am, I am, I am. And then somebody's got to step up and say, well, hey, could you get together on these days or those days or whatever? Or maybe just once a week, right? Because it doesn't have to be all the time, whatever. So, and then you can kind of figure out a time. Um, but in a skills class, so in a test class, so you got history, right? You look around and you're like, oh my gosh, you're in my history class. Oh, you're in my psychology class. One, you already know each other from here, so that's nice, right? And then you could say, hey, you want to get together and study and do that, you know, kind of go through your notes together and say, okay, what do we if, she, if the teacher gives you a review sheet, you know, go through and work on that together, that kind of thing, um, and test each other on if there's vocabulary or stuff like that, that helps, right? In a skills class, you can do that thing, right? You can go do, like if you were, somebody's in your math class, you can go to the tutoring lab in the library, right? Because there's the math lab, but there's the tutoring center in the library. When you go in the library and you walk in, like straight back there, there's a door and it says tutoring above it or student services, something like that. You say tutoring, okay? And um, you could go in there and say, yeah, we're just going to, we're doing a study group, but we want to be able to ask a tutor for help when we need it, right? Or you can have a tutor say, look, we're, we're studying this. Can we have a tutor sit down with us? And that way you can do some practice questions. And that way if you get stuck, you get it wrong because in math, right, the point is you look at the answer. Right, and you do it, and then you see, did I get it right? And then, if you didn't, you can look and say, oh wait, where did I make the mistake, right? And so you go do that, right? And then you say, okay, let me try this again, right? And you try it again, and that's why, that's why those answers are in the back of the book, not just to do that, but so that when you get it wrong, you look at how it's worked out, okay? Um, and if those aren't there, that's when you really need a tutor, right? And for me, I'm like, I need somebody to tell me where I went wrong, because if I do, In a class like English, you can do, say, we start, when we started a reading. So my friend Amy and I, who you now know well, right? Amy and I, she used to come over once or twice a week for dinner, and we, because we had, we were both English majors, right? By the time you get into your field, you'll start having classes with the same people. The people who were at this time, like the ones who are now in, you know, nursing or in radiology or in whatever, next semester, it's that same group of students who are still doing that and moving up to the next level classes. So, you know, you'll start having, and it's in your field. So you make friends, right? And then that way, too, she'd come over and we'd read, maybe we'd have, like, you know, stories to read. We'd read stories. Like, sometimes I'd be cooking and she'd read them aloud and that way we'd talk about it, you know, what do you think? What's, and we would play, like, what's Dr. Wiggin or what's Dr. Payne or what's Dr. Lincoln going to ask about this one? What's going to be their favorite part, right? And that's how you get ready for those times when you're going to have discussion because you start thinking, well, what is this teacher noticing and looking at? Right? But then you also say, what is my favorite part? Or what stands out for me? Or what doesn't work for me? Or what do I understand? Or what do I not? And that's nice, because then you've got somebody you know, and you can say, OK, did this part make sense to you? Because it didn't to me. And then they'll tell you in regular people words, right? Whereas sometimes those teachers lay out all those teachery words, and that's great once you get that language in your head, of the field in your head. But until that point, it's nice to have great work. So a study group in a skills class is really different. Sometimes it's just nice to say, you know what? Anybody want to just kind of write together? You know, you go find one of these nice little, in the, the new wing, there's the just little study rooms. There's some in the library, too. And you just say, hey, let's just boom, let's just take the set of time for 20 minutes and just write on this thing we have to write about. And then we can share it, or we can look at it and say, hey, I thought about this, or I thought about that. Okay. Sometimes it's just nice to have company to get something done, even if you're both doing it in your own head, you know? <laughs> so anyway, so anyway.
All right. So that's up to y'all if y'all, you know, want to do that. I put that there so you can respond later if you're like, yeah, I'm interested in a study group. And then, you know, y'all just have to chat with each other in person or online and, um, you know, and you can make your, you can make your own little group in the messages. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Because you can do, whoops, um, like you can do, you know, just, you know, let's just silent and you can go back in here and put in, oh, there we go. Okay, wait, so let's get, let's get Josh in here. For goals is due Friday. It will be due Friday. It'll, I'm pushing it back to, well, uh, well, this is Wednesday. So your draft for workshop. Should have been here today. Yeah, right? the one that should have been here today. So your draft is due. Okay, okay but... Still on September twentieth. No, no, I'm gonna move everything gonna back. Move okay. I'm gonna move so the what's due Friday is what is on your schedule for today. Okay. I see. Because no, we didn't do it. So yeah. I'm like, look, this is important stuff, and it's an easy one hundred. My other alternative is to put a zero and say we'll just turn it in. I, you know, I mean, I'm just you know, speaking so. for myself. I guess not being in class last week just kind of like I'm very much an out of sight out of mind person so I'm like oh yeah I think I'm and, caught up and see that's good so now you know right yeah. and so when you know that then that's what that's when you say what do I do for myself I'm very much a um like not realize that I haven't done shit like after I finish classes like I show up to class do the Kelly show and everything but then like like you know go talking to or just you know taking a break whatever doing this right my own mental health, right? And then it'll be like five o'clock and I'm like, oh shit, I need to grade things and I'm up till 12, right? So what I did, and it's become my favorite alarm. I have a three o'clock alarm set and it goes off at three o'clock and it tells me, hey Kelly, you know, if you haven't done any work, it's three o'clock. Maybe you could start now instead of at five or six o'clock. No, that's okay. okay. <laughs> right? And I'm serious. And, but then it also tells me what's nice is it actually has made me more aware of that. So I'll go take my break after teaching, but then I'll be like, oh, I want to get some done before my three o'clock alarm goes off. Because if I've done work, my three o'clock alarm also says, hey, you know what? You have done work today. Look at what you've done. How much more do you need to do? And when do you put it away and go home and take a break, right? And so, yeah, learning even those things where you're like, oh, I'm realizing this is where, you know, I screw up is excellent. You want to learn what things keep you from doing what you want to do. And then you can take care of them, right? And I never knew when I set that 3 o'clock alarm because I thought, well, It'll tell me either get to work and get work done, or it'll tell me, hey, good job. Why don't you, you know, wrap things up, do do whatever you still need to do, and then go really, really take a break instead of thinking, oh shit, I've got this stuff I didn't do, right? Because that's never the good break. Um, and I've lived a whole lot of my life. So that three o'clock alarm, that one little thing changed my life. Like I am and sometimes it goes off and I'm like, Oh my God, cool. I did that. And sometimes it goes off and I'm like, oh, cool. It's a reminder. Let me sit down and intensely work for the next two or three hours. And then I can walk away and not feel like, oh shit, I didn't do this. Because that anxiety of not having done it makes you feel worse, right? And then you put it off more and then you feel worse and then you put it off. It's, we all do it. You, me, us, we put it off. We do that, right? Maybe not everybody. Most of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are we supposed to turn in our reading critically and actively notes? No, keep those. Oh, yeah, those. Yes. Yes. You are turning in your reading critically and actively notes. Okay. And then so, we keep the defining goals? Right? Yeah, keep the defining goals notes because you need those to do your draft. Okay. What's that? The workshop. On the anything on that you have, yeah, the workshop, the the outline, the notes on the reading thing. critically and actively. So what you've already turned in on Blackboard, hand to me, because right uh, that way I'll go through and I'll put your grade for those. Okay, 
but you're defining goals keep because you're still working on it okay so keep the stuff you're still working on turn in the stuff you're done with what we'll do is um and then next time come in with your draft okay and then we'll all be happy and wonderful so i will go to the office and i will move this down to here and then we'll see what that it's a cascade effect that's why it's hard you know when you don't do something but you already plan to do five other things after that time and then you have to right that's why that's where we don't want that cascade effect to happen okay so all right um next time bring in a draft okay whether handwritten on your device whatever if it's on your device just make sure you want to share it. Right? And then if you don't have the... Um, yeah, make sure you have the outline um, notes. Yeah. Well, did you have one of these outline forms to do for the defining goals? So that will help you. Take your notes and, yeah, take your notes and use that. And then once you have that outline filled out, just... Put it all together and it turns into a draft.